kindergartners, welcome back. Today we have talked about and read our book, The Worry Stone. And we talked a little bit about different textures and things like that that we might find on stones. When we make our own worry stones, we're gonna have a big selection of textures. I have some rubbing plates that we're going to be using when we work with our clay. And as you can see, there are a lot of different textures and patterns on these plates. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of them. It's a big choice, isn't it? Wow, look at all of those. Some of them look like dinosaurs, some of them look like reptiles, other ones look like stones. We have a snakeskin one. I think there's a zebra. This one's like flowers and leaves. This one's some ferns. More of those scaly patterns. This one's almost like a rooftop. This one's a bumpy stucco. This one has little flowers or fireworks. I think this one looks like wood and this one looks like bricks. So when we're working with these today, you get to pick your four favorite ones. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. One, two, three, four. But the first thing we always do is put our name on our paper. So I'm gonna put my name on my paper first. And then I'm ready to look at my different textures. I think, hmm, when I'm gonna make my worry stone, I want something that's kind of natural. So I'm gonna try the wood one first. Now there's two sides to these. There's a bumpy side, so a, a convex side that comes up at you. And if we turn it over, there's a side that dips in and that's a concave. It's almost like there's little valleys that water could sit in in here. We want the bumpy side to be up first. And when we work with our worksheets today, we have our four sections. I'm only gonna put this under and color in the section that I want it to show up in. And I think I'm gonna try four different colors today when I do this. I'm gonna use red, yellow, green, and blue while I'm working on this today. So I think for the wood, I'm gonna try red first. Now when I color on this, I don't wanna color straight up and down. I actually wanna lay my crayon a little sideways or flat. And I just wanna color inside. Now, I'm pushing down really hard on my paper and on this plate that's underneath so it can't move. See if I try and wiggle it right now, it doesn't really move. We don't want that plate to move while I color because as you can see, it's gonna start showing us the texture and the pattern that's on the plastic. Look at that. You can see how that's coming through. And I'm using a big crayon, but I'm doing it on the side of that crayon so that the whole side of it is flat. And this part's a little tricky. I'm gonna keep going back and forth until I can see all the pattern. Like this. And then when it looks like pretty much everything's colored in, like it is, I'm gonna stop and I can move my plastic and put it back in the pile for somebody else to use. And then I have this neat wooden pattern on here. I kind of like that. But I know that when I go to do my worry stone, my worry stone's only going to be about this big. So that means the only thing that would show up in my worry stone is this inside part. There's not a whole lot in there, so I'm not sure if I really like that one. I'm gonna try another one instead. I think this time I'm gonna try the flower one because that one looked pretty cool. So I'm gonna put the flower one under this square down here, this rectangle. And I think for the flower, I'm gonna try blue. I'm gonna try blue on the flowers and see how I like it. Again, I'm holding it flat on the side and coloring it in. If you can find an already broken crayon to do this work with, it's even easier to put on the side and color with, isn't it? Some of our crayons are brand new and some are broken. So if they're brand new, we're just gonna use them on the side. I kind of really like this. You guys see how those flowers are showing up on there? You can see almost the little firework looking ones. I'm just gonna do that rectangle and then I'm gonna stop and move this out. And if I look at this one and I think about, well, this is about the size of what my worry stone is going to be. What would that be like if I had a worry stone in here? I can draw that in with my pencil and take a look at it. And I like that a lot better. This has a bunch more of my flowers inside of there than it does the wood grain over here. <laughs> my cat's coming over to say hello. Do you guys remember Cat Cat 
Let's see if she'll hold still for a picture. There she is. Hi, Cat Cat. <laughs> she likes to watch me do artwork. Do any of your pets like to watch you guys do artwork? It's kind of fun. All right, I have two more squares I'm going to do. Let's see. I'm going to look at... Ooh, there was that snakeskin one. I'm going to try that. That reptile looking... Is there another one that was a snakeskin? Ooh, an even better one. Yep, that one's my alligator. This one was my snakeskin. So again, I'm going to remember, bumpy side up, right? The flat side doesn't make so much noise, but the bumpy side makes a lot more noise with your fingernails. So bumpy side up, I'm put it under there. And if it's a snake, of course, I'm going to use the color green. So I'm going to use the side of my crayon again. I'm going to put it down on the side. This one's really loud. So a lot more bumps on this one. I have to hold this one pretty tight so it doesn't move. See, I'm holding over here. I'm holding the plastic and the paper. And I'm using a light green. So I don't see too much on this one. A little bit that way. I wonder what would happen if I flip this one upside down. I want to check that real quick. I'm going to flip it upside down and try it in my other square. Oh, look at that. So if I use this one upside down, I get an even better snakeskin pattern. Check that out. So I think when I like this one, I'm going to flip it upside down when I use this one to get my snakeskin pattern. That's pretty neat. I like this much better. There's a lot of texture in here. If I was going to have my worry stone here, look at how much texture fills up that worry stone. That's a good idea. I didn't like how this square came out down here, so I'm going to try one more on this. Let's see, I think I have flowers somewhere. Yep, here were some flowers or some stones. And then I have a yellow one. Let's see what happens if I do the yellow on the green. Do you think I'll be able to see it? Ooh, I can see that one. Can you see that one on the screen, how those stones are coming in? They look like rocks. There we go. So that one looks kind of like rocks or even maybe giraffe polka dots, like on a giraffe. See what that would look like with a worry stone. Oh, I kind of like that one too. So if I look at all four of these, let's see, which ones do I like best? Well, I think this one's really pretty. I think a girl would like to wear this one and have that one for her worry stone. So I'm gonna put a star on there. Hmm, what were my other favorite ones? I think the snakeskin one was kind of neat too. So I'm gonna put a star on that one to show that I like those two. Now I'm finished with this side of my worksheet. That means that I so can flip So if I flip, flip my over. paper over, it says something or someone you hug who makes you feel happy and safe. So maybe that's your mom or your dad, your brother, your sister, your grandma, your auntie, one of those people. You could draw a picture of them or you could draw something that makes you feel happy. Maybe you have a special Paddington bear that you like to hug onto. You could draw a picture of. Or you have a favorite blankie or a stuffed pillow. Or maybe your dog. You can draw any of those things. I know when I was a little girl, I had a blankie that I liked to hold onto. And for a long time, that blankie had pictures of little birds on it. But when I would get really worried, I would hug on to the edge of that blankie and I would rub it like this. And I rubbed it so much that all the little birds came off and my grandma, she had to start doing this to my blanket. What do you think she had to do? Yep, she had to start putting quilt patches on it to fix all of the holes that I was rubbing into my blankie, which is okay because I still loved my blankie. It was still soft and nice. Oh, there goes my cat again, silly kitty cat. So now it's your turn to draw someone or something that you like to hug onto when you're worried.